into the settings of my first virtual machine. And we're going to make sure that it has two network cards. So I'm going to go to where it says add hardware, choose network adapter, click add. And I'm going to add the second network adapter. We see adapter one is already there. I've got two network adapters on here. So I'm going to choose network adapter two and apply. I also want to make sure that the settings look the same and they do don't have any other customizations. So I'm good to go. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to start it up and I'm going to set up a NIC team. So a NIC team requires at least two NICs, as I mentioned earlier, and we do this in server manager on the server. Now I'm going to connect to it as if it's a local computer rather than as if it's a remote desktop, because I would lose communication if I went and set up a NIC team during a remote desktop session. So I'll just right click and choose connect. And my 2019 server is coming up. And now I'm logging into my server. For NIC teaming, it doesn't matter if you're doing this on a domain controller, an Active Directory domain, or just a regular member server, or a server that's in a work group. It'll work no matter what, as long as you have two uh, physical NICs or virtual NICs uh, as a, at a minimum. Now I've got to find an IP address that's not currently in use. I'm going to ping one which I believe is not. I think it's 207 is not in use. And besides just pinging it, because ping is disabled in the firewall by default. So even though it can receive a ping, the firewall is going to block it. So what we need to do is we need to also do an ARP space minus A command. And that'll tell us if it's communicating with the MAC address, if the firewall is blocking it. Um, so obviously we see a lot of different uh, IP addresses here. So I'm going to redo that one with the pipe command more. So that way we see one page at a time. And 207 is not in use, so I can go ahead and use that. So now I'm in my server manager. Next thing I want to do is go to where I can set up one of these teams. I'm going to click on all servers and we'll see any servers that I have in the list. And I'm going to find my file server one, which this server is running. I'm going to right click on it. And then we should see the option for NIC teaming. And there it is, configure NIC teaming. Now, if you don't have two NICs on there, then you may not see that option. So make sure you've got two. And again, this works in both a physical server as well as a virtual server. And in my case, I'm using Hyper-V. Next, what I want to do is I want to select both my network cards by holding down the Shift key. And as many network cards as you'd like to add this to, it's up to you. I'm going to right click and choose to add to new team. Now, can you create a team with two different speeds? Yes, it is possible, but you will get unpredictable results. All right, so my team name is going to be Team 1. You can call this anything you want. I've selected both of my uh, Ethernet 10 gigabit adapters, which is because it's a high-end server. We have 10 gigabit adapters. So I can also click on additional properties. Now these additional properties, um, you don't really have to configure if you want to just go ahead and say, this is fine the way it is. However, there are several options such as switch independent as, uh, on the teaming mode, load balancing mode, as well as standby adapter. So if you want, you can have all adapters active or you can choose one or the other. Uh, but this really makes more sense if you have three or more network adapters rather than just two. Now, in a physical server, you're going to see options to be able to change the teaming mode and the load balancing mode. So in a virtual server, you're only going to see uh, these options, switch independent and address hash. So if you are using a physical server, you may want to look up from Microsoft. Just go to technet.microsoft.com and find out what each of the different teaming modes and load balancing modes mean. But like I said, you don't have to use any of those. The defaults that show up are going to work just fine. So I'll click OK, and now it's creating the team. Now our NIC team is complete. We can see the team shows up over here. I can right click on it. I can choose properties and it just shows that both network adapters are there. Now, if I have more network adapters, if I want to remove a network adapter, all you got to do is check the box or uncheck the box, depending on what you have. So now what we have to do is we need to set up the IP address. So earlier we made sure that 207 was an IP address that was free. 
So now I have to assign it. And so far we haven't done that. So I'm going to go into control panel, just, just whatever the fastest way you can get to the network and sharing center. There's multiple ways to get there. I'm going to click on change adapter settings. And now I see this new team that's shown up. So we still see our two physical adapters, but what we want to do is we want to set up the team. So if I right click on one of the adapters, we'll see the option for TCP IP4 is gone. So you only are going to see it under the team now. So I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to go to IP version four, go to properties there. Now I can set that 207 address. And I could say we're going to go out 21.1 and 110 is our domain controller. So now I'll click OK, click close. And I'll just minimize those boxes. Now I'm going to bring up PowerShell and PowerShell is going to tell us whether or not uh, we are going to get out to the Internet. Now, it doesn't matter if you do PowerShell or command prompt. It's just a little bit easier because that was in the list. So we're still getting out to the Internet, which is awesome. If I do an IP config slash all, we'll see that our IP address is 207. So everything is working as I'd hoped with the team.